tonight sa ato ang pag padayon sa ato ang feast of trumpet no uh, and of course partly we will discuss about the day of atonement and the lego ng dios nga din as we follow no unsa ang gi instruct kanato sa Ginoo in the book of Leviticus about the seven feasts of the lord and salamat ka daghang mga tao excited no ko mingo sa inyo ha uh, keep up the good work no uh, Ibin nga nag-start ta ni Abu Tag 1300 karon sa atong uh, live nga mga televiewers and as we continue to the series in the in the end in, in the seventh feast of the Lord uh, tonight I will discuss about a prophetic pageant pag wiyung kag the word pageant means elaborate display or gitawag uh, nga uh, Bura ba o kana bang naay gitawag nga uh, kung iyong ka display eh, dapat na showcase na show and that's why in this end of, of days makita ni mo nga ang ginoo mo orchestrate yun nga diin ang church the true church of Jesus Christ mapansin ni ini nga panahon kinasya display and so yung gusto na kanyang masabda na to kung iyong tag na prophetic display aduna ay gina orchestrate ang ginoo nga mga butang nga diin dili usual or maybe miingon ta strengths or dili kasagaran alang sa uban and salamat sa Ginoo nga nagaanta og wisdom understanding knowledge nga ato ning uh, sa atong hunahuna sa tawhanon nga hunahuna masabtan nato ini in sayano nga pamaagi number one, i would like to discuss about symbolism of the trumpet and that's why in Leviticus chapter 23 of the feast of trumpet the bible says on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of rest, a secret assembly, uh, commemorated with the trumpet blast. So, ato makita, kini di ay, uh, kini nga required sa ginoo, sumala sa book of Leviticus, ato makita nga diin, ang tanang Bible-believing Christian, not only the people of Israel. Kaya ang seven feasts of the Lord, dili siya gitawag seven feasts of Israel. That's why gitawag siya seven feasts of the Lord. Those who Believe in the Lord, the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dapat mo follow ni ini. Eh, say daghang kayo ng kasimbahan ng lahi ang ginafalo, lahi ng celebration ang ginabuhat ng wala gi sulti o gi prescribe sa ginoo ang gisogo ino sa ginoo mo na wala buhata. Na kung nga ay nagbuhat sa gisogo sa ginoo ang tinuod ng feast ng gi required sa ginoo na himo na hinong fake. O gantong paganistic practices kay mo'y naandan, mauna hino o'y gina-acknowledge. O mo'y niyang realidad na naagyo'y mga butang na diin. Uh, ang mga tao mangita kung mangita lang o mali. Kay kung ang tinuod, dili masulti, ang mali mo'y ginapablow up. O mo'y niyang realidad. On this way, makita ito ni makita. On sa ibot, ipasabot sa symbolism of the trumpet. Number one, or literally, message of warning. So kung na ay trumpet call, a trumpet symbolizes an urgent prophetic message from God, usually a warning through one of His servants. Kasi yung gamito ng maghatag og warning, iyang alagad. Kaso lang, ang word ng warning, dili acceptable, dili acceptable, dili accepted sa mga tao. Kaya kung na maghatag og warning, ang naghatag og warning mo'y atakihon. Through, ato makita din ni God says to the prophet Isaiah, cry aloud, lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. Again, go ato hisgutan ang sala, ato hisgutan ni mga butang nga diin, e, bura na lang na himo ba nga kumon sa mga tao nga ginahimo, ang nagasulti, og naghatag og warning atakehon mo nay pangitaan og mali and salamat og dalay god ang dios nga diin kitang tanan pwede mo warningan because we are in the end of days dapat tang magpa warning amen amen here ato makita in Ezekiel chapter 33 god makes the prophet Ezekiel a watchman to the house of Israel say to me watchman to the house of Israel in other words, ang ginoo magpadala yun always o watchman. Ang ginoo magpadala yun o propeta. Amen. Amen. Dili theologians. Dili doctorate degree. 
dili expert of the law. Ang ginoo na ay prophet nga iyang gamiton. And that's why that masabda nato ni. Here in the in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel is appointed to speak to the nation in warning. Ang ginoo mo pili gyud sa tawo, mo hanpik na sa tawo nga maghatag og warning. Say it with me, warning. warning. And that's why in Ezekiel 33 verse 4, if anyone hears the trumpet but does not take the warning, his blood will be in his own head. Ang tao daw nga nakudungog sa warning kung dili siya maminaw. Siya ay manubag sa iyang kaugalingong dugo. Amen. So, importante ang message of warning. Amen. Karoon mga nga panahon, gusto mga tao mamina o minsahe nga pleasing in their ear. Kana bang muhatag sa ilaha nga manin mag-enjoy mag sila sa ilang madungog. Kaya ang tao, kana bang naasya kita huwag ba nga... Uh, Weakness sa tao, kada bang buli-buli, uh, kada bang palapalahan siya. And that's why pag nuwans nga doon ay word of, or message of warning, nga dili pleasing in their ear, ang ilang mga dalonggan, bubagting. O di sila makapugaw mo speak against the prophet. Na tapos sa tanah to, ang ginoo, ang iya laging gamiton, propeta. Amen. And number two, about symbolism of the trumpet, message of mobilization. In other words, ang gino naghahatag og warning, naghahatag binsahe, aron ang iyang katawahan, iyang immobilize. Say to me, mobilize. mobilize. The trumpet were also used by the military to communicate a message to mobilize to the large number of soldiers. Say to me, large number of soldiers. So in other words, kung adunay word, message of mobilization, Ang gino nakasabot nga kana nga grupo nga ipagagamito na ay large number. Large number of soldiers. In other words, in other words, daghang tao nga mutik heart o mahimong responsi, respons, responsible o responsibilidad, budawat og responsibilidad. Tas nga ihatag sa Ginoo. Dili ang Ginoo mudaw gamit og eh, I know. Here makita nato ang Book of Ezekiel. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 8. That's why ato makita din he, for if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, kana bang muhatag ang trompeta og dili klaro nga mensahe or sounds, who shall prepare himself to the battle? And that's why makita nimo diri ang gisgutan diri battle. In other words, kanong nay prophet nga gipadala ang Ginoo. Aron mabubilize ang mga tao, ma-prepare ang mga tao, maghatag og warning sa mga tao. Why? Kaya na'y battle. Say to me, battle. battle. Kamu, karoon nga nasa simbali na minaw sa ako. We are at war against the forces of darkness. So, every moment, every day, nakipag-battle ta. Dili ni siya trabaho or dili ni physical battle but spiritual battle but it will affect physically. And that was up to natin yung mga butang. Nga ang ginoo ni ini nga panahon, seryoso siya. That's why na ay trumpet nga yung patingugod aron maghatag o warning o magmobilize sa mga tao to move on. Dili kay mo back, mo back off mo or mo atras sa ilang tawag. But sad to say na mga tao nowadays, mo atras ang tawag. Kaya nga naman, dili sila seryoso. Dili sila faithful sa nagtawag o nagpili kanila. And that's why here, Ato makita, number two, about prophetic pageant. Number one, symbolism of the trumpet. Number two, prophetic ministries in the last days. So, unsa mahita mo sa mga ministries in the last days? Dapat ato di masabdan. So, din ha ato makita, two things to keep in mind are this. Duha kabutang, dapat ato ibutang sa tungo na huna. Number one, this feast is fulfilled as the church age is ending. Say it with me, church age is ending. So in other words, kining feast of trumpet, ma-fulfilled kini, ma kini siya during sa time or sa panahon na mo enda ang gitawag church age. So kung sabot, masabot, kung mag-end ang church age, what's next? It's about 
the judgment of the living nation before entering into the millennial reign. Tanawin nyo na. And dapat masabtan na ito, pag buwend ang church age, adun ay great persecution or tribulation for seven years. So seven years lang. Dili dugay. And salamat sa ginoo, nga ikaw nga naminaw, karun ka na ako, makabatong kag-understanding nini in order for you to prepare. Nga sa matag-adlaw, batsel ni, gira ning atong giapilan. O ginhi makita ang tinuod nga nangalagad sa ginoo. Amen. Amen. And that's why ato makita number two, duha ka butang na dapat ato i-keep in mind this peace is fulfilled as the church age is ending. Matuman kini nga feast sa panahon nga diin ang church age mahuman na. Number two, trumpet speak of prophetic ministries. Say to me ministries. So din ato makita nga ang trompeta di ay Og ang prophet na gamiton sa Ginoo mag-speak siya about prophetic ministries. In other words, ang iyang ministry na inline sa mga prophetic or the, ang iyang direction kung unsa ang gisulti sa scripture. Amen. I didn't conclude from this that the consummation of the church age, in other words, to make a consummation, completion. Si dun me, completion. Sa completion sa church age, kung sa mahita po, will be marked, listen to this, will be marked by a strong prophetic voices raised up by God for these days. In other words, ang ginoo ni ining panahon, ni ining gitawag ministries in the last days, okay, before mag-end ang church age, ang ginoo mag-raise up, o daghang mga prophet, to give warning. Amen. Ikaw nga namin daw na kung karo, pwede kang gamitin sa gino, propita sa imong pamilya. Propita diha sa imong komunidad. Diha sa imong barangay, sa imong purok. Daka mga tao karoon, dili, musulti, o mga prophetic words, so kay mahadlok silang blandiran nga false prophet. No na ang realidad. And that's why walay mahitabo sa ministry. Walay mahitabo sa ilaha kay dili sa gusto mo deklarar kung unsa ang gusto ipasulti sa Ginoo. Realidad ni sa atong panahon. Amen. Again, atong makita nga in this atong makita the consummation of the church age. In other words, completion of the church age will be marked by a strong prophetic voices raised by God for these days. So, ang ginoo mag up siya. O mga prophetic voices, maybe ikaw isa ani. Amen. Amen. And that's why makita nato about prophetic ministries in the last days. Number one, foretold by Jesus. Gisulti na ni Jesus. Si Jesus ang nagsulti ni ini. Jesus said, this is what God says about you. I will send prophets and apostles to you. Listen to that. Kisa ipadala. Prophets and Apostle. Hmm. Daghang mga tao, mga question nga no, ang tawag sa ilang mga leaders, Apostles man, mga nung Prophet man, tungkol kay mauni ang gidesign sa ginoo. Amen. Dilita gusto, dilita pwedeng mugawas kung unsa ang gibutang sa Scripture. Si Jesus, again, ang nagsulti, magpadala siya mga propeta, mga apostoles, nga ni, nga to sa iyong katawahan. O kung sa'yong buhaton, aning nga mga prophets, o sa'yong buhaton sila in response sa mga leaders o sa mga tao. And you will kill some of them and chase away the others. Imagine ka pat yun pag yun di ay. Wherefore, behold, in, in sa lahi nga translation, I will send unto you prophets, and some of them you shall kill and crucify. And some of them shall be, unsaon daw, inyong i-persecute from city to city. So, ang atong makita din ang mga propita, ang tinood na propita ay persecute yun. Kasi mo persecute the religious group and the government. Kaya kung usulti kang tinood, pangitaan ka o bikil. But si Jesus nagsulting daan na ito ni Ine. Nga ipadala ta. Isip mga propeta, mga apostoles. 
Dili aksidente nga inyong mga leaders, gitawag mga apostles. Ug miagi ta ani gitawag great persecution tungod kay part ni sa atong tawag. But dili ni makapastop ka nato. Dili ni mo cause nga kita mo atras o mo undang sa atong tawag. Kay ngano man, mao ni ang gidisenyo sa Dios ka nato. Grateful ta nga gamiton ta sa Dios. Wala tay nerve mo reklamo sa Ginoo. Pasalamat ang nagrasyahan ta. Kay kung wala ta nagrasyahan, wala ta na luwas. O wala taong nagwarning nato, o wala taong nagwali nato. Ang grasya disgrasya. The realidad ni. And here atong makita sa nahitabo ni Jesus Christ sa dihang niadto siya sa Mount of Transfiguration after being up on the mountain of Transfiguration. Jesus is having a discussion with his disciple. They ask him an important question about Malachi's prophecy some 500 years previous to Jesus. So ang mga disciples ang utan na kang Jesus Lord na may gisulti ang prophecy or si prophet Malachi about 500 years ago. Na, na ay mo abot. So ilang gidiskas ani. Nagbanding sila o face to face nagmeeting, dili so meeting kay wala may restriction sa bukid. Karon ra man ang restriction. Kani adto wala. Og bingon si Jesus in Mat iyang kitan aw ato makita sa Malachi chapter 4 verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Say to me the prophet. Eli Propeta lagi yang ipadala. Dili theologians. Nasabdan. Dili theologians. Ang ipadala. Propeta. Okay. So, on sige sulti di di, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So, bago daw mahitabu ang adlaw sa ginoo. Ang makalilisa nga adlaw sa Ginoo, ang Ginoo magpadala daw si ang propeta. Nakuha? Not the disciples question about this and Jesus answer. And the disciples ask him, why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Nga dili dili di, ikaw dapat Lord, ili ikaw maguna Lord, dapat maguna si Elijah. Nga nung naguna una man kalor ba sa mga tao ba? I-accuse pa hinuo nang nagsulti ni Juan nga maguna una. Mao ni nita ba ka Jesus? Dapat, di ba dapat nun, buwabot ulang si Elijah? Kita niyo na, ang katubang nila ang ginawa, ha? Nga nung, burag lahi lagi, Lord. Basi, false prophet ka, Lord. Nung nina-issue ron, false prophet. Batanawa ang sige tubag sa itong ginawa. He replied, Elijah is ended coming. Pointing to the future fulfillment. Listen to that. And will restore all things. Kung sa'yo buhaton daw, pag buabot daw ang alagad sa gino, i-restore niya ang tanang butang. But I tell you that Elijah has already come. Si Elijah may abot na. Kung sa'yo buti pa sa'yo, present fulfillment. Kung na'y future fulfillment, na'y present fulfillment. Amen. And they did not recognize him. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them about John the Baptist. Nakuha na? So, nakasabot ang mga disciples. And that was up to Nemo. Kaya ikaw na minaw na ako, Karan. Kamo nga na sa simbal, ay that was up to ninyo ni. Prophecies can be multiple fulfillment. Say it with me. Multiple fulfillment. Ang prophecy, pwedeng matuman sa mga daghan ng panahon. Sa nagkalanlain ng higayon. O baon ni nahitabo, kang Elijah ang niabot si John the Baptist. Nasabda na doon eh. So, kung siya mahitabo, the option, we all go are not exhausted in one occurrence. Ang prophecy, wala nakakonfine in one occurrence. Dili lang mahitabo sa osaka panahon. Kung hindi pwede mahitabo sa daghang panahon. And that's why this is certainly true of Malachi prophecies concerning Elijah. Tinood ni sa panahon sa propesiyahan ni Malachi, mahitungod kang Elijah. That's why listen to this. 
Elijah's anointing or mantle rested first upon Elijah. Black. Tanawa na. So, ang sinahita po, as a doon nag-rest ang anointing, mantle of anointing, Elijah. Then, upon Elisha. Wala nag-stop kang Elijah na ay future fulfillment. O wala lang nag-stop kang Elisha then upon John the Baptist. Nakuha ninyo na? Natuman 2,025 years ago, ni rest ang mantle of anointing kang Elijah o kang John the Baptist. Listen to this. It will rest in the future upon another. Humana ang panahon ni John the Baptist. Again, una na human ang panahon ni Elijah, ni Elisha, ni John the Baptist. Pwede pong matuman karon. Nasabdan ko ninyo? Kini nga anointing or mantle of anointing will rest in the future upon another. So, pwede ang ginoo maggamit din nga panahon. Kasi ang gamit doon, propeta. Amen. I believe that the day is not too far distant. Nagtuo ko nga dili layo ni nga panahon. The trumpet will again sound that his prophetic voice will again be heard. Nai-iris up ang ginoo nga prophet nga karon musulti sa tinood. Aron magmobilize sa mga tao, maghatag og message of warning, aron ang mga tao makapangandam. Dili na ta sama kani adto nga naghuwat nga nay mo abot nga propeta nga iyang suot nagbahag lang. Kedi usong bahag ron. Pwede na siyang magjacket, pero leather jacket sama sa gisuot nga la jacket ni John the Baptist. Li realidad na. Husahay man gud ang atong otok na confine sa usa kabutang. Nga ang Ginoo pwede mo gamit sa tanang panahon. Ayong pagunahon ang ang propeta maabot karon nag nagtapot ang iyang buhok kay nagbubuho siya og locos or honey aron mailhang isang propeta siya. Maybe ang gigamit karon argan oil na. Dili na mo tapot, humok na og humot na. Dapat mo makasabot, ana. Realidad ni karon. Lahi ang atong panahon. But ni ini nga panahon, pwedeng mo rest ang anointing, the mantle of anointing of Elijah. Pwedeng kung kinsa ang pilion sa Dios. Amen. Amen. Dat masabda na tuni. Again the trumpet will again sound that is prophetic voice will again be heard. Ni ini nga panahon, madungog ang message of warning and message of mobilization na dapat masabdan sa mga tao nga mag-prepare. Amen. Amen. The Ligon ang Dios in Matthew 17 is a little under being to a little understood but extremely important passage of scripture as it relates to understanding the events that happen the six days ends and the seventh begins. Meaning the six days end kabaluta unsa ka importante ang word or ang gitawag six days because six days that speak against the end times because a day for us is a thousand years of the Lord and a thousand years of the Lord is of course pwede nang buhaton sa Gino and that's why sa unum kaadlaw gibuhat niya ang tanang butang but in the seventh day he rested from all his works ugma unik karun we are about to end the church age and we will enter into the Sabbath rest of the Lord. That was sabda na eh. I think it's worthy of time and space to clearly explain this passage. Dapat was sabda ni nga passage. Amen. This verse or passage verse by verse, it gives us a key to understanding that the day in which we live, kini nga panahon, kini nga adlaw, panahon nga atong gikinabuhi, posibleng mauna ang katumanan. And salamat og dalay gun ang Dios. Amen. Ato makita kung unsa ang gibuhat ni Jesus. Again, uh, sa transfiguration ato makita si Jesus o si gibuhat niya. Kinsa ang gidala? It will be at tanawon ni Matthew 7:1 after 6 days. 
Why after six days? This is a prophetic time. What they saw in a vision will happen. It will be at the end of the church age. In other words, the last trumpet called Mahitabo Dao sa ending sa church age. Amen. Amen. And that this guitar walk after six days. Jesus, listen, took him, Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led him up a high mountain by himself. So as a historian ni Jesus, sa lihang na importanteng mensahe na gusto ng ipabot ng atong ginoo, ginadala niya sa high mountain. O dito ang ginoo, ang iyang gidala dito, iyang istoryahan. Amen. Asa dadon sa Ginoo, high mountain. Magpili na kag asa gusto ninyo nga high mountain. Alang-alang mubalik pata sa Mount Sinai. Human naman to nga panahon. Alang-alang mubalik pata sa Mount of Olives. Ni aman ta sa Davao. Nay high mountain sa Davao. The Mount Zion in the mountain of the Lord. And that's why kung ikaw dadon sa Ginoo sa high mountain, bless kayo ka. Kay ngano man makadungog ka. Makakita kag mga butang nga dili kasagaran. Kada siya mo na ko sa mutuo rapod. Amen. Ato makita this inner circle of highly committed. Say to me, highly committed. Highly committed. Kita ni mo. So kadang naa sa inner circle, mga highly committed ay na. Amen. Highly committed followers of Jesus Christ will be the ones who are drawn by the Spirit into a place where they are alone with the Lord. Amen. Mano, mas maini mo sa katagbo, kinili kayo daghan. Kay para makadungog tagtarong. Amen. Most believers, listen to this, most believers will be too caught up with the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches we took the word ang mga tao daw dili baka response tungod kay na mga cares of the word wala ko nakapangandam magpabaksin pa ko mao ni ang issue karon nay gitawag deceitfulness of riches ngay mo tuok sa pulong sa Gino mo suppress sa pulong sa Gino They will not hear the prophetic ad admonition. Di sila maminaw sa minsahe, sa prophetic admonition. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord and His appearing. Tanaw ni mo ang usya 6.3. Usi dapat itong buhaton garon. Di lita dapat mahimong laks kayo. Di ta mahimong nga buran na tag-isigulaki. Kabaluta sa sitwasyon ng panahon. Ang atong unsa may naha nato di nato na madala. Ng realidad na. In other words, akong gustong ibot ipasabot sa inyo nga dapat tagaag pagtagad ang atong tawag. Dili ta dapat matuok sa mga cares of this world. Mga deceitfulness of riches. Dapat ang bahandi or wealth dili na may makapugong nato. Much more ang atong pamilya, ang mga makapugong na ito, dili. And that's why here, atong makita, Hosea chapter 6 verse 3, They will not head the prophetic admonition. And here, the very word, verse 3, Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the shower, like the spring rains that waters the earth. Ang pag-abot daw sa gino sigurado, His appearing is as sure as the dawn. Kung kita naka-experience o kadlaon, bigli sa iyo sa adlaw, iyon anak na siguro daw ang pag-abot sa gino. Amen. Amen. And that's why, hear the call to the high mountain to be alone with Jesus until He unfold the glorious revelation of Himself and His purposes to you. Dapat maminaw ta. Na aday call to the high mountain. Hallelujah! Amen. And dapat kung usa ka tagbukid, makadungog ka. Kay dili na siya mo ato kay mag-enjoy-enjoy lang. Paminaw. 
Kibasing isa ka nga gamiton nga propeta sa Ginoo. Amen. Pero kung busy ka sa imong personal nga agenda, saan paggamit sa Ginoo sa imo? And that's why Matthew 17 verse 2, there he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Verse 3, just then, here appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Atong makita. Nga diin, adunay mga transfiguration, adunay mga strengths, things nga mahitabo. Sa dihang ikaw, muad to sa bukid sa ginoo. In Hebrews 9, 26, this is the essence of the Son of Man coming to His kingdom. It is Jesus in His glory communicating with the great prophetic ministers that will appear in the end of a in the end of age. So atong makita din he nga niini nga panahon ang ginoo makigsulti sa mga tao ng iyang pilion. Nga mo communicate sa great prophetic ministries nga mahita mo in the in the in the end of days. Atong makita. John saw a similar scene in Revelation. Nakakita si John. Unsay mahitabo sa katapusan sa kapanahonan. Now, ato makita. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God and seven trumpets were given to them. Nakita ni John. Nakita siya mga mata. Neither time nor space allow us to comment Mo ingon mo kutang dali na kita mo comment ba. Dili ta mag-isip sa tong words ug uban dali na kaayong mo post. Dali mo publish. Kung unsa ilang una hona. But here ato makita si John. Ingon siya dinhi, nagtanaw siya kung unsay pwedeng buhaton ug unsay isulti sa Dios. Here in Revelation chapter 10 verse 5 to 7. Then the seventh angel, whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land, raised his right hand to heaven and swear by him who lives forever and ever. There will be no more delay. Mingon daw ang anghel. There will be no more delay. Said we me, no delay. No more delay. But in the days when the seventh angel is to blow his trumpet, his the mystery of God will be fulfilled as he, uh, as he announced to his servant, the prophet. So, ang plano or purposes of God sa last trumpet call, ang misteryo, ang mystery, ipakita sa gino. Ipadayag sa Diyos. Ug matuman ang iyang gisulti, sumala sa iyang mga pulong dito sa iyang mga propeta. Realidad ni Nini nga panahon. Ang tanan nga gibutang sa propesiya mahitabo. Mga tao nagyaga-yaga. But ako mo na are you ready? Karon bospol kay mga tao. Are you ready kung kini karon buhaton sa Ginoo? Are you ready to face the judgment of the Lord? Pamati ra kayo mo. Kinsa man ang tao? Kinsa man ang tao? na magpataas at ubangan sa ginoo. Dapat mo makarealize. Kamu nga nagabas. Dapat mo makarealize. Are you ready to face the judgment? Karon, maayo pa ninyo musulti. But tingala mo, in a twinkling of an eye. Kaya ang ginoo ang in control, pwede kang i-judge. Na realidad ni Ato makita, we learn several important things from this passage. Number one, angels are involved. It would be angels. That mong makasabot nga ang angel bupatay split seconds even 7,000. In a plague, 7,000 split seconds. Nini nga panahon sa judgment sa ginoo, angels are involved. Ang mga propeta sa ginoo musulti lang. Ang mga anghel ang mo execute. Dapat mong makasabot anak. Dapat mong magmata karon. 
Iyagayagaan ninyo ang nagshatag o warning. Huwag mo nakabalo na i-anghel dia sa imong likod. Ready to execute. That was sabta ninyo na. Ato makita that angels, gitawag silang special messenger, are involved in the feast of trumpet. Amen. Seven trumpet sound, the seventh announces the, the completion or the consummation of the church age. The mystery of God will be consa consaminate or accomplished and fulfilled. So, morning nga panahon. In number two, secret rebuild. Ang mga sikritong butang ipadayag. The prophetic ministers will be received, listen to this, the prophetic ministers will receive revelation about the specific of what is to be. This is consistent of what the Lord told Amos. Surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing His secret to His servant, the prophet. At kung makita ang ginoo, wala sa buhaton kung wala or dili niya ipadayag sa mga alagad na mao ang mga propeta. Wala ay buhaton ang ginoo na dili niya isulti siyang alagad. Tapat kang makasabot, anak. Kung ang prophet imong yagayagaan, kung ang prophet imong i-accuse nga false or mini nga propeta, ako may ngun sa imo, ha? Be warned. Kay ang propeta, dili mo sulti si ang gustong mahitabo. Kung dili nagsulti lang, sumala sa gipasulti sa Diyos. O dapat masabta ni mo, in this end of days, mauna ang katumanan sa tanan nga gisulti sa pulong sa Diyos. Ayaw atakiha ang prophet. Kay in the past, ato makita, ingon ang gino, I will send some of you, my prophet and my apostles. But, unsa sa inyong buhaton, inyo silang i-persecute, i-crucify. Ang uban ninyong bunal-bunal, ang uban ninyong patsyon. And that trawa ninyo ni. In salamat ug dalaygon ang Dios. Nini nga panahon. Ato makita kung unsa ang mga butang nga buhaton sa Dios. That's why nakabaluta pagbuabot ang judgment sa Ginoo. Na agi dakong butang nga makita ang mga tao. And dalaygon ang Dios ato makita even in the book of Revelation kung atong i-review ang book of Revelation, these two prophets kinsa ni in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 11. Ato makita, na two witnesses. Nga gipadala ang gino. So, ato makita, daghang mga theologians yung nagsulti, nga kini daw si Elijah o si Moses. I don't think so. But here, klaro, duha ka saksi ang gipadala. O sige buhat nila, ato makita, does this sound like what the three disciples saw in the mount with Jesus? Nga yung nakita, nga kuno na daw si Elijah, nakita si Moses. But here, ato makita. The essence of His kingdom coming with power. In other words, ang ginoo, muftuman sa iyang giplano, nga iyang gingharian, maistablisar, nini nga panahon, ubugamit sa mga propeta. Amen. And here, ato makita. Daghan mga ba, nag-claim, sige, okay, assuming nga kini si Elijah o si Moses, and Moses say, and Elijah is with him, dito sa transfiguration, or Mount of Transfiguration. The outcome of this is described in verse 11, chapter, in verses 11 to 17. So, unsang gisulti niya? Revelation chapter 11, 15 to 17. For just then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices shouting from heaven, the kingdom of this world, or the kingdom of this world now belongs to our Lord and to his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. In other words, when the last trumpet call, nga patingogon, mo end ang church age, and the mystery of God will be fulfilled. Unsa nga mystery? That the kingdom of this world, unsa may hitabo, now belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, gi, daghan kayong nag, gusto mo, nag seek of power. Daghan mga tao, gusto mo lingkod. Bisan asang estado niya sa gobyerno. But in the when the last trumpet call sa diang mahitabo ni lahi ang buhaton daghan mga tao nagpaabot sa great reset ang new world nagpaabot sa great reset but dapat makasabot mo nga ang Ginoo ang in control he is on the throne lahi ang iyang reset 
Tatwa sabtan yun na. Amen. And that's why ato makita din he. Sa lihat daw mahitabo ni that the kingdom of this world now belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ and He shall reign forever and the 24 elders sitting on the thrones before God throw themselves down in worship saying, We give thanks Lord God Almighty who is and who was for now you have assumed the great power and have given or He and begun to reign. Hallelujah. Pagbutingog ang katapos ang trompeta, igsoon, ang tanang baser, mawala. Kay mo rin ang ginuog ang iyang katawan. Dapat mo makasabot ini. That's why, atong makita, prophetic ministers in the last days, number one, foretold by Jesus. Gisulti na ni Jesus. Number two, will announce the end of the age. Makita ni mo na. Nga ang gitawag nga prophetic ministers in the Lord mo announce daw sa katapusan sa kapanahunan hallelujah it is clear to me that the seventh day when Christ's reign begins in other words the millennial reign okay nagawa will be ushered by a powerful prophetic ministers before mahitabo ang millennial reign before mahitabo ang great persecution unsa mahitabo na aday mo usher will be ushered in a powerful prophetic ministries. So, nini nga panahon daw na mga ministers nga magiging gamiton sa ginoo. Amen! Amen. I hope, kamong naminaw, diha sa CDO, diha sa Bohol, and even diha sa Lapu-Lapu, Mandawi, Consolacion, Danao man, or in the entire Mindanao, kamong naminaw, Dapat mo makasabot ni ini that in, in this end of days, adunay prophetic ministries nga gamito ng ginoo powerfully. Amen. And I hope nga makuha ni Mona. And I hope nga makasabot ka ni Ana. Aron ka makaklaim sa imong part, sa imong portion. Again, in Jesus' first visit to earth, His coming was preceded by a strong prophetic voice in the person of John the Baptist. Listen, the religious people did not recognize the religious people did not recognize Elijah in the person of John the Baptist. Listen to that. I believe it could be that way again. Nagtuo ko, ingon anak gihapon ang mahitabo. This great prophetic anointing will fall on person nga pili on sa gino. Maybe in the world or maybe in the bow. Maybe in Visayas, maybe na ay gamiton part of the globe. We do not know. Pero nagtuo ko, nga adunay mahitabo, this great prophetic anointing will fall on persons appointed by God. Aron makita ang manifestation sa power and the anointing of increase and multiplication, even the anointing for wealth. Dapatang makasabot ni ini. But only those who have eyes to see by the spirit revelation will recognize whose prophetic mantle has fallen on the prophetic ministries. Katulang na ay mga mata, espirituhanon nga mga mata ang makakita kung asa ibutang kini nga prophetic mantle of anointing. Amen. The festival of trumpet. Powerful prophetic voice will announce, listen, will announce the end of this age and beginning of the next. Dalaygo ng Dios. Amen and Amen. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Continue, Lord, sa pagpili o katawan. Nga mahimu o Dios, nga mahimu strong prophetic voices that will raise in this end of days. And salamat, O Lord, nga naakay makitaan, dagang kag makita. Lord, nga imong gamiton in this end of days. And salamat, Lord, that the anointing nag flow. The power, the mantle of anointing of Elijah, Elisha, even John the Baptist. Wabot ni ini nga panahon. Nga diin mo manifest ang anointing. Great anointing. And mga tao ginoo, mo take head sa prophetic voices nga ilang madungo. I speak salvation to flow. 
I speak, Lord, raise up more prophet. More people. Na mo taw- mo, mo sanong sa ilang tawag. Continue, O Diyos, sa pagpili, sa pagtap. Hindi nyo mga tao nga nag-pray karon, Mga tao nga nag sa ilang mga kamot. Let the anointing and your power be upon them, O God. Lord, nagaampo ko nga daghang prophetic voices ang madungog ni nga panahon. Daghang mga tao, O Diyos, makadungog sa grasya ngayon mong i-offer o ang kaluwasan ngayon mong i-hatag ka nila. Dalay gun ka, O Diyos. I release that anointing, that mantle of anointing. I release that, Lord, that your people will increase and multiply. Continue, Lord, to move, Lord, to move powerfully. Continue, Lord, God, to use us in a mighty way. In Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen and Amen. Salamat sa ginoo sa iyo mga pulong karon. Ah. Uh, Miyong ko blessed Yom Kippur to all of us. Sa nag-celebrate ni ini karon together with us uh, from Mindanao to Visayas region, Visayas Island, no? Salamat sa ginoo nga kini nga kini yung pag at pag pag-celebrate nato sa seven feast of the Lord. Uh, nalipay ko nga bisag unsa pa ang mga unsa pa ang mga restrictions sa so, unsa pa ang mga limitations sa katag sa ato ah, pero madayon gyud ta to so, kay gusto gyud sa Ginoo nga tumano nato kung unsa ang nakabutang naka no naka kung unsa gyud ang gisulti niya sa iya mga pulong atong hibal-an unsa di ay ang unsa ka importante ni ini because we know nga ang seven feast of the Lord ah uh, time clock na time calendar timeline na ni Lord para sa ato ah isulti agi isulti na ta gi hatagan ta ni bishop og picture no last sa uh, even last sunday nga uh, the uh, ang ang wala na lang no the final o oh, ang final nga feasts ang wala pa na fulfill ang feast of trumpet and then of course there's the Yom Kippur or the, or the of Atonement and then of course the the last will be the Feast of Tabernacles. So naat atong gi-celebrate karon kung unsa ang unsa ang unsa ang significance sa Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur for all of us no nganong ato man pud nitya gi atong gi celebrate para sa ato karon so ang significance ani para sa ato a. Atong may balaan nga si Ginoong Hesus Jesus becomes the fulfillment sa Yom Kippur. Ibalutan ni Ana gi as, as illustrated no ito to illustrate God's plan of making people at one with himself. He had to use three objects no para sa sa in, in the Yom Kippur in the day of day of atonement to look ka object ang iyang to look ka to look ka object lessons ang iyang gigamit So that we will know that we will be at one. Atonement is at one. We will be at one with God Himself. So, night three co-objects. Number one is Aaron, the high priest. Number two, the sacrificial goat that gave his blood to pay for our sin. And number three, the Azazel or the scapegoat which is to carry away our sins to the wilderness to be remembered no more kini nga tulo ka mga object lessons nga atong igang gigamit sa atong amahan no aron nga may bal-an nato kung nga kita di ay nahimutang atuan nahimo nang naiusa diha kaniya in the old testament tulo ka object to siya but when jesus came he became all three fulfilling one fulfilling in one he became our high priest he became the one who would shed his blood to pay for our sins and the one nga maupod ang nag nahimo nga Azazel or the scapegoat who also bear away our sins to be remembered no more arong ato mga sala dili na ma 
Hinom duman. In the Old Testament, the Holy of Holies, the sacred place of God's presence, could not be entered without the blood of atonement. Kining blood of atonement, kining uh, the, the sacrificial goat. Mauni siya ang dalun ang iyang blood, ug dalun ni dito sa Holy of Holies, or the most holy place, the most, uh, the, I mean, ko nga, the most sacred place, the sacred place of God's presence. Dili ni siya, ma, dili ni siya, ah, uh, Nobody, it could not be entered, dili siya masudlan, without the blood of atonement. And only once a year lang po ni siya sudlan sa high priests. So sa diha nga, sa diha nga si Ginong Isus, na himo nga uh, fulfillment, ining day of atonement, ato makita nga ang nahitabo. Number one, the veil is removed. On the day of atonement, The veil is removed. Atong may balaan na in the history, when Jesus died on the cross, a great change na idako kaayo kabaguhan ang nahitabo. Ingun sa Mark 1 verses 15, chapter 15, verses 37 and 38, ningun siya din ha, Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and dismissed His Spirit. So siya ang nagdismiss sa iyang Spirit. Give up the Spirit and the Curtain in the temple was split apart from top to bottom. So na tunga ang kurtina dito sa templo. Kini nga kurtina was a very heavy tapestry. Bagak kayo ni siya, bugat kayo ni siya nga tapestry. Nga nag-veiled, no? Nag-himo nga veiled diha sa Holy of Holies. Nag-separate ni siya sa holy place o sa most holy place. Meaning, a uh, holy place na adito ang na adito ang bread na adito ang table nga na adito ang ibutang dito ang bread ibutang dito ang uh, ibutang dito ang katong lampstand na adito sa holy place and in the most holy place wala laeng na adito ang ang uh, ang um, covenant the, the ark of the covenant mola ang na adito sa most holy place it's the holiest part of the temple or even the tabernacle before pa sa temple. When that veil, sa diha nga katong veil, split apart from top to bottom, God was miraculously confirming nga ang world that the world had moved into a new dispensation, a new era, a new age, a new, a new season. Hallelujah! Nga, one in which a judgment throne covered with blood now became a mercy throne. Katong, 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 katong Ark of the Covenant, nga mauto siya, i-cover nga, mauto siya ang gitawag nga, it's the judgment throne. Nga sa diyang, naay mo sulod dito, nga wala, wala nagdala sa blood, at uling blood, o magpatakalag sulod dito, even a priest. Nga dili pa naon sa day of atonement mo sulod siya. It will be that 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 black that ark of the covenant became a judge be, becomes a judgment throne. Mahimo siyang judgment throne. Kay anybody nga mo sulod dito nga walay blood ug dili siya sa sakto nga day, the day of atonement. Patay gyud siya diretso. And that is why hinahimo siyang judgment throne. But on that day, sa diha ang 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 veil ang ang curtain was split apart. Adunay milagro nga nahitabo. He confirm sa ginoo nga adunay new dispensation has come, and the judgment throne that the that was covered now with the blood now became a mercy throne. Nahimo na siya nga nga trono sa kaluoy, trono sa grasya. Hallelujah! A veiled room that was placed, that was a place of death for all who entered except the high priest once a year with the blood, now become an open place of life and blessing. Hallelujah! For all who would believe that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. Kinsa man dili ang nagdawat ang ginong Isus, nga mo ay bugto ang personal niya nga manluluwas, may ko ka nimo, ang trono sa gasya karun sa ginoo, abri na ka na itong tanan. 
Og aduna na natay gitawag nga open space, open place of life and blessing. Tell your neighbor, life and blessing for all. Ug ang invitation now goes out. Ingon siya dito sa Hebrews, let us therefore approach the throne of grace or the, the mercy throne with boldness so that we receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Hallelujah! And so their brothers, now we may walk right into the very holy of holies where God is. Because of the blood of Jesus. Wala na nag-atang ka nato yung soon. Wala na yung nag, uh, na nag-ibuhimulag ka nato. O naghatag ka nato o partition wherein dili na nato, dili nato ma-experience ang presensya o kaluoy o gugma sa ginoo. Nisha, this is the fresh new life giving way that Christ has opened up for us by tearing the curtain. Si Ginoong Jesus mismo, he became our he became the fulfillment of the day of atonement. This is the fresh again this is a fresh new life giving way that Christ has opened up for us. By tearing the curtain. Unsa ra tong curtain? His human body to let us into the holy presence of God, and since this great High Priest of our rule of 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 ours rules over God's household, let us go right into God Himself. Hallelujah! Pwede na kamo doon with true hearts. Fully trusting Him to receive us because we have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and because our bodies have been washed with pure water. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 19 to 22. Hallelujah. Jesus became the fulfillment. The veil is removed. The veil is removed. Now we can approach, we can come in into the very presence, into enjoying no, the very presence of God. And that judgment became now, the judgment throne became the mercy throne or the throne of grace right before us. Hallelujah. Ikaduhang abutang nung ato ang may ato ang may sabtan ani that the judge Uh, that Jesus became our for the fulfillment is the final sacrifice. Jesus has opened the way to the mercy throne. His blood was offered once and for all, once and for all time. Tungod kang iyang ang iyang uh, eternal life, ang iyang his eternal life was sufficient to pay for the sins of the whole world. Kaisa lang. And for the whole world na siya, he does not have to offer himself again every year as they did in the Old Testament. Every year, every Yom Kippur in, in the temple in Jerusalem, every year, the priest has to come every, every year on one day. Yung e, mangurog pag gina siya tungod kay, ano kayo na siya ka ng, uh, mag, uh, dili siya, dili siya, dili siya kampante. Tiyota, dili siya ka ayaw yung anak, good ka, isog. He doesn't know. Kaya wala siya kahibalo kung unsa ang iyang sa ang pwede mahitabo sa iyaha dito sa sulod no sa sa holy of holies. And every year he has to do that. But Jesus Christ, he opened the way to the mercy throne and he offered his blood once and for all. He has been offered for sin once and it is already forever. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4 to 5. For, this is, for it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats really to take away sins. Hindi ka pwede, hindi ka posible. Nga ang dugo sa baka, nga mo ihawon tuod karong ano, dugo sa baka, o dugo sa go sa kambing, no? Dili siya enough to take away our sin, to take away the sins of the people of that time. That is why Christ, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4 to 5, that is why Christ said, as He came into the world, O oh God, the blood of bulls and goats cannot satisfy you. So you have made really ready 
this body of mine for me to lay as a sacrifice upon your altar. Jesus became the final sacrifice. And Jesus became our great high priest. Hallelujah. After dying for our sins on the cross, He became our great high priest. He took His own blood to sprinkle in the Holy of Holies in heaven. Dito sa, dito sa, gikuha na iyahang, ang iyahang, uh, He took His own blood, iyang gidala, ang iyang kaugalingon, na dugo. Aron nga is, is, sablig, is sprinkle niya dito into the Holy of Holies in the heavens. Ah? In the heavens, nagyod ni nga Holy of Holies. The real thing. Ang, ang Holy of Holies sa tabernacle and even the Holy of Holies in the splendor of the temple at the time. Dili siya makamiyong ka. Wala, yun siya kakumis sa kuminking sa tinuod. Yun, nagisundugan lang. No? Ha, tinuod nga. Presence of God. The throne of God. Even in the in the heavenlies. Ug mauto dito ni Ginoong Jesus dalon ang iyahang sa dagno ang iyahang kaugliyong dugo into the holy of holies in the heavens of which Moses tabernacle and later that even the temple of in Jerusalem were just earthly replica. Ang ang tabernacle ug ang temple were just earthly replica lang kung sila. Type of what this really is real nga to added to gyud sa Yan, sa ginoo, dito sa, sa kalangitan. Nga nung makayunta ni, do you remember, ga, ga, may lang kainig siya nga evidence, no? Tip, no? Nga gihatag ni, gano, hint, no? Nga gihatag ni ginoong Isus. Nga dito yun niya mismo gidala ang iyang dugo dito sa Holy of Holies, dito sa kalangitan. Can you remember mo, dito sa diyang isultian niya si Mary? Diyang si Mary mo may una nakakita sa iya ha? Sa iyang pagkabanhaw? In John chapter 20 verse 17 giing niya si Mary Do not cling to me Ayaw sa ko pa ayaw sa nosrojol sa ako ah O never ayaw sa ko guniti Siya for I have not yet ascended to my father Ako ha ninyo ni Jesus had to take his blood and sprinkle it in heaven to give proof to God that the price for sin had been paid. Ano magatagaan niya og proof, evidence? Amahan, nabuhat na nako ang ako ang mission. Nabayaran na nako ang tibuok, sala sa tibuok, kalimutan, present at at past, future at present, and in even the future sins of the whole world. Albo niya ako ang, and here is my blood. Here is my blood. My own blood. I bring it to you. The only blood na welcome dito, ningam to flesh and blood could enter the kingdom of heaven. The only blood na na pwede makasulod sa trono sa grasya sa amahan. Mao ang dugo ni Ginoong Heso Kristo. And that is what he did. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 and 12 ningam siya in the living translate living bible. He went into that greater perfect tabernacle in heaven, not made by men nor part of this world, and once for all took blood into that inner room, the holy of holies, and sprinkled it on the mercy seat. Na mercy seat sa heaven. Na dito po na dito to ang tinuod nga ark of the covenant. Na ang ibabaw sa Ark of the Covenant mo na gitawag nga mercy seat. Na ana adito ang at uh, 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 duha ka cherubim nga nag nga nagduko, nga nagbaw in that in that uh, covering sa sa Ark of the Covenant mo na gitawag nga mercy seat. Ug mudto gihatag gi he he was and for all he took blood. He took blood into that inner room the Holy of Holies and sprinkled it in the mercy seat. But it was not the blood of goats and calves. He took His own blood. Hallelujah! In Romans 3, verse 25, For God sent Christ Jesus to take the punishment for our sins and to end all God's anger against us. He used Christ's blood as the means of saying us, from or for saving us from his wrath. 
What great salvation we have. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ's blood has saved us all. What a great salvation. Another thing ato ang dapat mahibalan for the day of atonement or the Yom Kippur is this is a day of soul affliction. Grabe ko kayo in, in the book of Hebrews, no? We gain tremendous understanding by studying, by studying the day of atonement. Kini nga old proverb is true. The new covenant thou was in the old contained. The old covenant is in the new explained. No? Again, uh, the new covenant was in the old. Ang bago daw kuno nga pakigsabot o testamento o pakigsaad na uh, was in the old. Na dito sa karaan, sa daan. Contained. Dito na butang. But the old covenant is in the new explained. Gi, gi-explain na, gipasabot na para sa atua. But there is another aspect of the Day of Atonement that is very vital, no? Importante ka ayon sa ato ang mga kinabuhi. Alam ka na nga mga magtutuo and even the church as a whole, supposedly, this is the message. Day of Atonement or even the feast, seven feast of the Lord. Dili ni sa seven feast of Israel ang Israel ang dapat ang mag-celebrate ni ini. Kundi li, kitang dapat tanan, even the whole church, the people of the book, the people of the Bible, Jews and or Israelites and Gentiles alike dapat mo celebrate ni ini. O salamat sa Ginoo nga kita karon nagaka-celebrate o mo sabta nato kung unsa ang significance ani para sa atoa. Unsa ni sa timetable sa, sa Ginoo ang Yom Kippur? The final moda ni siya. The final days of human history kay naamla kita sa ika six no nga feasts. So nata sa pa ending, mo ang tawag ani the, the the nga nga feast daw is the 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 great and a final feast season. So kung sa kalendaryo sa Ginoo ni siya, the great and final days fulfillment of the end of days ni siya. The final days of human history before the return of Christ are to become more and more difficult. Muna nga, nganong, kanong ato mag-unit siya, nganong apil-apil mag-itaan niya, nganong apil-apil mag-itaan niya, nganong apil mag-itaan niya, nganong apil mag-itaan niya, feast. <laughs> Patakahibalo di ay, before no nga, ang seven feast of the Lord, kalendaryo sa ginoo na, Nagihapadayag sa atua. At even in this last day, salamat na nakakita ta na yung nakasabutan ni ini, na-reveal ni sa atua. Aral nga ma-warning ang ta. Three na lang, no? Tulo na lang ka feasts. Ang wala na fulfill. Diya sa history. Now, na nata na karon gud may yung jukong nga na nata sa final days of human history in the final days of human history before the return of Christ it will become more and more difficult because in Leviticus chapter 16 verse 29 give forecast ni siya in this words related to the day of atonement ningo siya din ha in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month which is the Yom Kippur ye shall afflict your souls. Ye shall afflict your souls. So, buti pa sabot na ito, Ani, nga, uh, doon naging afflicting of our souls, of the souls, anang ang mga panahuna. But for us, nga kita, nga naga, nga naga celebrate, Ani karon. We know nga nagi afflicting of souls dapat ka mahitabo para sa ato ah, karon ng mga adlaw ano mga panahuna. Because of course, gikan gaina ala sa is hangtod ugma sa ala sa is wala gitay kan anay ha. This is the day we're in. Unsa pay kay unsa pa daw kuno ang atong dapat i-observe during the day of atonement. 
In Leviticus chapter 23, it says here, Anyone who does not spend the day, ang day ni Nidhi, ni Adlaw, ka lang, ni Adlaw, san lang ha, mag-start ang, ang, mag ang day, no, ang kalendar, ang time, uh, sa 24 hours is 6, good. 6 sa gabi eh. So yun siya, who does, not, uh, who does not spend the day in repentance and sorrow for sin shall be excommunicated from his people. And I will put to death anyone who does any kind of work that day. Isaiah described also, Rabbi ni ba, this is the, mayroon ko, pinaka-solemn. In, dito sa, if, in Israel, the Yom Kippur is the most solemn. Mayroon ko, pinaka-solemn no nga celebration. Ang tanan ang ataw, wala ginay, wala ginay halos tingog. Everyone who will just walk in the street will have their face Soul affliction man yun. Dili ko sila pwede mag-smile. <laughs> Pero kita kay, ang ato ang, ang, ato ang kaluwasan, gihatang na ginawin sa ato, ah, this is worth praising and thanking the Lord and being happy in the Lord. So, si Isaiah gidescribe, ang, ang ano lang din is ang, ang pinaka, ang pinaka significant nga atong dapat buhato ni ini. Ningin siya, uh, si Isaiah gidescribe niya ni, Nga adlawa as a day for a man to humble himself for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes. Di na kinahan itong buhato ni nga mag-lay down ta, mag-higda ta, di ha, o sa sako, mag-wear ta, o sako nga cloth, pagkatapos, mag-higda yun daw kuno ta, di ha, sa sackcloth pod. Ashes sa abo, abo, no? No, will not. We will not do that. Ang butang ipasabot ani spiritually, ni siya diri, it was a solemn day of soul affliction. Meaning, the word afflict in Leviticus chapter 16 verse 29 is the Hebrew word ana or ana, which expresses the idea of looking down on or bro beating oneself. Other meanings is you you abase or self chasing self or deal hardly with self or humble self. Meaning, it's uh, it's to humble bef ourselves before the Lord. Gisulti na nako nga gisulti na to. Ang kita ng Kristuhanon ang ato ang ang ato ang attitude dapat for us to grow our, in our faith with the Lord. Kana bang there is always na good always ng attitude of humility before the Lord and saying, Lord hibalo ko nga ko ako lang wala dyan ko mahimo sa akong kaugalingon na among ko yung mga kalapasan kasaypanan sa ako ang una sa ako ang gibuhat o sa ako mang gisulti na sulti anything nga wala ni mo kahimot i ginoo pasaylo ako sa ako ang mga sala the day of atonement is a call to repentance is a call for a spiritual sanity nga mobalik sa ato ah. nga dili ta dili ma, dili dili ang kaluwas nga kun ato pak nang Dili na ito ipakibit balikat. Ang gibuat ni Ginoo sa Kristo dito sa cross of Calvary was not an easy thing. Ato lang na siyang puro lang og, puro lang og walay dito tagaan og dakong bili sa ato ang mga kinabuhi. Nga dali lang kaayo ta nga mubiya o mutalikod o mubuhat og ingani nga sala o mubuhat og ingani nga piyong ka gamay raman ni Lord. Ngayon siguro ka, makasabot mang kaan yung gino, makasabot mang kaan ni Lord. No, nung daw siya sa inyo ha, nakasabot pa po ka sa ako. Nga dili lalay mga akong giagian. Araw lamang nga makuha na ni, ni mo. Makuha na ko o balik no, ang nawala nga, nawala nga purity and uh, enjoying the presence of the Lord. Dililalim ang separation. Nga ako ang separation, uh, the, 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 
Mayroon ka ang, ang veil na nag-separate you between you and my Father in Heaven. Dili, dili siya yung ingat o kadali na nakuha lang. It was not. It takes my body to be broken. This veil, this spiritual veil, this human body of Jesus, it takes His body to be broken, to be split apart. That, so that the blood, no, His blood could enter into that holy place. Aron nga mahimo nato nga sacrifice. So that now, blood sacrifice, so that now we can enter into that holy of holies into the presence of God, into the throne room of grace in the heavenly places freely, boldly, and with confidence. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. So today, atong talaw ni siya na ikaw o ako mo spend time ta before ta mo ato sa ato ang Uh, praying and uh, prayer for the nation. And before tamato sa ato ang um, seed for the word for the, for the night, can we just spend just a minute or two to just humble down ourselves before the Lord? Can we just do it right now? Can we just kneel down tonight in your respective places diha sa inyong mga panimalay and for once imagine mo ang kauglingon ayo ka na earn enter boldly into the throne room of grace but first we have to humble down ourselves first humble down ourselves Turn to the Lord and let the blood of Jesus right now imagine yourself being sprinkled with that blood of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, we humble ourselves before you, Lord. Thanking you, oh God, for what you have done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Forgive us if there's anything. See if there are any ways in me that is not pleasing and before you right now. Search me, oh God. Search me, oh God, and know my heart today. Try me, oh Savior. Know my thoughts I pray see if there is any way in me and keep me in the way everlasting oh Lord we humble ourselves before you our hearts our whole being Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you have done. Salamat, Ginoo. Makinig nga panahon. Maka-reflect me. Maka-reflect me, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Oh. Our Abba in heaven, thank you for sending your only begotten Son. 
our Lord Jesus, who became the sacrificial lamb for each one of us. And now, as we as we offer to you even our seed for this day of atonement, our offering for today, as you apply the blood of Jesus on it, we thank you, Lord. Dili man ay mga offering mo ang makaluwas sa amo o makakuha sa among mga sala. But this is an offering of gratitude for what you have done. O Lord Jesus, accept accept this offering for all of us. We thank you so much, Lord, for everything that you have done into our lives. Amen and amen. Those of you who have prepared no, sa ilahang mga offering, special offering for this day of uh, Yom Kippur, you may now, we may now uh, give your seed offering, even for the word and for this feast, for this day of atonement. Go! Seeding joy, your praise fills like a rain. Make this tell the land. You have served my morning into dancing. You have served my sorrow into joy. offer you this offering right now and we thank you oh god nga ikaw ginoo pinaagi sa mga mili nga dugo naga 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 ga bless sa imuhang mga kanakan cut the curse of of sin the result of sin in their lives the curse of sin in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus and we thank you lord ng imong mili nga dugo Mawag nagluwas ka na mo, gikan sa tunglo, sa sala. O salamat kay Ginoo, that even this offering right now, ang iyong katatag sa iyong, ang iyong gihatag sa iyong mga katawahan, salamat na kinig Ginoo, ang Diyod, akong kayimuan sa ilang mga kinabuhi, even sa ilang tibuok pamilya. Thank you, Father God. We thank you, we love you, and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen, and amen, and amen. Pray for the eight pillars of our society. Let us start from the family. Magampu tatanan ni ini sabay sabay ta. Let us read in the book of Malakai chapter four verse six. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children, and the hearts of the children to their parents. Most gracious and loving Father, 
we come before your throne room of grace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that in these last hours, families after families will be saved. Lord Jesus, bless every family and children in our society. Give every family hearts that follow after you the strength to not be afraid and courage to stand up to what is right. Produce within them integrity and may their lives give you glory. Lord Jesus, let every family walk in your authority and may they understand and live each day acknowledging the authority you have given them as your children. Abba, our Father, as you give us this wonderful promise in Psalm 103, verse 17, from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear Him and His righteousness with their children's children. What better promise could we receive from you in our lives than to see our children and children's children blessed with your love and righteousness? Bless us with strength to be there for those we love and wisdom to know what to say to bring comfort, encouragement, and sometimes difficult truth. Lord, I pray, I pray your emotional, physical, and spiritual protection over every family. Keep evil far from them and help them to trust you as their refuge and strength. I pray you will guard their minds from harmful instruction and grant them discernment to recognize truth. I pray you will make them strong and courageous in the presence of danger, recognizing that you have overcome and will set right all injustice and wrong one day. Help them to find rest in your shadow as they live in the spiritual shelter you provide for them. Let them know that the only safe place is in you, our Lord Jesus, and that their home on earth is only temporary. Lord, help us to be thankful for one another. Help our children to be thankful for each other. For our family to be grateful for each member and to pray one another continually. Our gratitude for one another will bind us together as a family, and our prayers for each other will further unify us in gratitude and love. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, inspire us to recall who you say we are. Love, forgiven, saved, purposed, unique, Thank you for the comfort of family, the warm embrace of a mother and father, siblings and extended family. Bless us to be patient and wise, to seek you first and speak kindness. Convict us when we are wrong and strengthen our resolve to apologize in the midst of conflict and hurt. Tell us to focus on you. Order every children's steps and guide them into the future you have for them. Give them minds and hearts that remain faithful to you all the days of their lives. Prosper every children, every child, Lord. Help them understand that following you is the greatest success. Protect every family and kids from the evil forces that want to pull them away from you and help every family and children put their trust in you. May every family walk with you always. A lamp stands that shine your light for all to see. May every family be ready when, your harvest, when you harvest your crops. May they be a ripe fruit ready to be plucked by your hand. Lord, I pray every family would begin in each day putting on their armor, prepared and ready for battle. Lord, lead every family into an intimate knowledge of you. Let them live lives that exude 
the fruits of your spirit. Let every children, every child to be leaders that others follow because they see in you. They see you in them. Lord Jesus, be the rocks they can hold unto all the days of their lives. This we ask in Jesus' name and by the power of your blood. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Let us continue to pray for one pillar of our society that needs so much prayer and strengthening in these last days, the church. As I read the scripture, the word of the Lord says in Daniel chapter 9 verses 4 to 6, I prayed to the Lord, my God, and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our ancestors, and to all the people of the land. Please join me in my prayers as you see it on your television screens, your phones. Join me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for the church the body of Christ. We ask for forgiveness for the sins committed by every ministers and spiritual leaders, every delegated authority in the church. We apply the blood of Jesus for cleansing and sanctification. We declare today for divine alignment and obedience to the prophetic words of the Lord. We declare that the church will exercise authority in this end of age and will take the responsibility for bringing in your kingdom on this earth. Your kingdom come and your will be done, Lord, over your church. Thank you, God, that the church will possess the gates of the enemies as you have declared in your word in Genesis 22:17. I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offsprings as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. We declare increase and multiplication in every churches. We declare revival. Hallelujah. We declare that the church will rise up and become the voice of truth in this world, speaking forth the good news of the kingdom boldly and lovingly. Romans 11:25 says, I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. We declare that more of your children will respond to their God-given calling in winning souls and making disciples and therefore completing the number of the Gentiles. We bless and declare peace to Israel. We declare for a shepherd's heart among God's people in the church to take care and feed God's flock. We pray for integrity, holiness, and righteousness. We pray for God's ministers to be faithful and bold to trumpet all the prophetic words of God, not only to the church, but to the nations so the people might return to the Lord. We pray for more divine appointments that will bring transformation to people. We proclaim release of the people from every spiritual bondages in Jesus' mighty name. We declare that the church will exercise the role of bringing deliverance and jubilee to the nations and exercise her prophetic role to the society and its pillars. Yes, Lord, the church will rise up. We declare unity for the body of Christ, for only then can the Lord release His glory and blessing. We uproot the spirit of idolatry that strips people of their protection and provision in Jesus' name. We ask for your leading, Holy Spirit, and for your power to manifest in the church. We declare signs, wonders, and miracles. We declare that the church be committed to be true worshipers of the living God, worshiping in spirit and in truth. 
we declare that the church will stand firm and be rooted in God's word. We declare for restoration of first love, the love for God, and that every leader in the church will have a deeper level of intimacy of God. We declare for faithfulness in the midst of trials, testings, and persecutions. The church will overcome this world. We declare for a rapture-ready church. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue to pray, let's pray for our government. The word of the Lord declares in Psalm 33, 12, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he choose for his inheritance. In Romans chapter 13, verse 1, Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Please join me as we pray for our government. We apply the blood of Jesus and we ask for forgiveness for every sin done inside the government. We declare the government be aligned with God's purposes. We rebuke the spirit of corruption and deceit that takes place in His arena. And we do not allow the enemy to move in the takeover in Jesus' name. We render powerless, earthly desires, pride, and the desire of the riches among politicians, the end in corruption and immorality in Jesus' name. We declare today that Satan be displaced and exposed of his lies in the government. We proclaim today for a God-centered government. We declare for demolition of all stronghold of the enemy to break the grip of Satan upon our government, the executive, the legislative, and judiciary branches, and also for the local officials and for attached agencies of the government. For the sake of our nation, we declare for God's righteousness, justice, and blessing to reign. We pray that God will plant in our government officials a heart for the welfare of the nation and the people, especially the poor. We pray that the Lord will deliver the Philippines and the nation of the world from, the, from, from legislation that will devastate the nation and the people. We pray for the King of Glory to come in and judge all the wicked spirits in the government. We declare for God's transforming power, wisdom, guidance, and protection upon our men in uniform. We pray for their salvation and the mighty visitation of the Holy Spirit upon them. We pray for demolition of all wicked syndicates out to destroy plunder devastate and corrupt the nation and the people smuggling illegal drugs and gambling syndicates we pray also for all the government leaders here and other nation of the world we declare for good governance and that they will rule the nation with a god-fearing heart and love of nation we pray for every prime ministers kings queens monarchs families and other government leaders that they will know christ wholeheartedly and accept him as their lord and personal savior we pray that they will know search live speak and remain in the truth from the word of god we pray for the upcoming 2022 elections in the Philippines. We pray for all the candidates, especially to the presidential and vice presidential aspirants, that they will rule the country with patriotism, God-fearing heart, love of God, 
and love of nation with fresh anointing power of the Holy Spirit. We declare that there will be reforms and change in the Philippines to become a better and progressive nation. We pray for godly wisdom among all the Filipino people to choose the next leader. We rebuke and destroy the electoral frauds for vote buying, electoral killings and sabotage in the name of Jesus. We pray for the spirit of honesty and integrity among all governing during all governing authorities during election. We declare today for peace and order over our nation. We declare for justice to prevail in the implementation of laws. We declare for hindrance of the passage of satanic laws here in the Philippines. We declare that the government will push through prayer and evangelism in public and private companies and industries. We offer the government to you, our God. We declare revival to our government. Take your place, O Lord, and sit on the throne of our nation. Our glory belongs to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. For business and economy pillar, let us unite in praying for business and economy, specifically in the Philippines. Let's understand. Let's understand that praying for our economy is equivalent to praying for the total resources of our nation. In Scripture says in Psalms 24, verse 1 to 2, the earth is the Lord and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the water. Follow this prayer. Let us pray. We know, God, that your heart for every person and every nation is to live under your provision. You delight in providing for your children. Money and resources are a blessing from you, God. We cancel the mammon spirit that leads people to become lovers of money instead of becoming lovers of God. We cut the lies of the enemy that money is the true source of provision in Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus from the crown of thorns, we are no longer slave to poverty. We know that you have blessed us and the economy that, and the enemy cannot curse whom you bless. We declare that the economic system of this world are going to collapse. Yes, we declare that these people will come out of this world's world evil system. Out of poverty, out of the idea that money is our provision and be translated in God's system of abundance and provision. Lord, tonight we pray for proper management to the total resources of our nation that will produce distribution of wealth. We believe, Lord, that these resources of, are all yours and once all the property harnessed and entrusted to right people according to your will. It will offer opportunities for your poor domestic and international trade to gain profits to able to provide for the needs of the people and the nation. Lord, we declare that as a result of your transforming power, people will cut their independence to the world's economy and put their full trust and dependency to the kingdom economy. Because in your kingdom, there is no economic collapse. In your kingdom, there is no bankruptcy. We declare for your kingdom to be established here on earth. We declare for the transformation of the economic and financial health of our nation as we apply your most precious blood from the crown of thorns that will cancel and annul financial and economic curses and oppression. We bind the spirit behind economic manipulation from this day forward. 
We allow you to be in full control of our nation economy and we are no longer controlled by enemy's influence. Lord, we declare that you will provide anointing and the power to get wealth for your people. Harness the resources and skills of your people that will contribute to nation building true jobs and wealth increase. Raise up more opportunities as an avenue for your people to experience your blessings. Raise up God-fearing entrepreneurs with strong management skills. Businessmen and women are pursue righteousness to access true favor and blessings. We apply your blood from the global crisis we are experiencing such as energy crisis, environmental crisis, food crisis, financial crisis, and most especially spiritual crisis. We declare recovery in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of corruption, greed, and poor leadership that oppress your beloved children. Lord, we pray for financial and economic recovery to those who are affected by the economic collapse and oppression of this world. Lord, we declare that you will raise us up as a true kingdom economic model here on earth that is compassionate for the less privileged majority of the society. We declare that you will raise up business people and leaders that is not only concerned of profitability but the betterment of your people. We allow you, God, to start doing new things for our nation, Philippines. A great shift will come. Overflowing blessing will come. Wealth transfer will come by raising up workers and business owners who have the vision and a heart aligned with your purpose. Lord, make Philippines a brand new one, a nation living in your provision. In Jesus' name, Amen. continue to pray in one accord for the education pillar in our society let's declare together the word of the lord in the book of proverbs 2 verses 6 to 8 for the lord gives wisdom and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding he holds victory in store for the upright he is a shield to those whose walk is blameless for he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones before we will start to pray for education especially in the philippines let it be revealed to us that as we pray for this pillar in our society we are seeing the future doctors future teachers future mayors counselors presidents and other leaders that will be raised up and govern this nation for the next generation to come Join me as we pray. Father in heaven, as we apply the blood of Jesus from the crown of thorns over every minds of your people that cancel and annul the belief that human reason is the only legitimate source of knowledge. Let the mind of Christ flow to every student that they would know that you are the only foundation of all sound knowledge and learning. Lord, raise up teachers that has the spirit of the fear of the lord that they will teach and instruct your people in accordance to your laws and teachings any form of traditional education system from the past generations that compromise your teachings and laws be uprooted in jesus name let the bible be one of the greatest references for the mode of instruction of every teacher inside the classroom let your teachings and laws be the foundation for the educational curriculum in the Philippines. You will be the one standing in front, giving the lesson to your people. We uproot and tear down every seed that has been planted behind atheism, liberalism, and rationalism that break forth 
false teaching, wrong doctrines, and logical reasonings unto the learners. Every spirit behind homosexuality, fornication, and adultery that had been considered as a norm in this society be uprooted in Jesus' name. Every lies and deception from the enemy be rooted out in the mighty name of Jesus. We cancel and annul every humanistic philosophies that distort the minds of your people, making them subject under the evil's influence, O Lord. Let every student be instructed to earnestly seek you with all their hearts, soul, and strength to know the real meaning of life. Lord, we know that you long for your people to eagerly follow your ways and commands. Your desire is for them to know you as their great teacher and counselor. Now, let them be subject under your instruction and guidance. Tonight, we speak to every student, the children, youths, teenagers, and adults to be the channel for the truth to be spread out around our nation. They will become the voice of truth for those who are lost because your Holy Spirit will guide them into all truths. Let your ministering power flow that they will move in signs, wonders, and miracles as they follow your lead, O Lord God. We speak to the hearts of your students who are suffering from depression, pressure, oppression, and rejection in their learning process for you to strengthen and empower them. We bind the spirit of suicide, the spirit of death behind these people in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, Lord, we declare restoration of all things. You will create all things new in the area of education in the Philippines. Let the portals of heaven be open for the children to learn how to hear from you, O God. Release the spirit of wisdom and revelation that your people will come to know and see you as their great teacher, the source of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The spirit of pride, arrogance, and self-exaltation will bow to the pit of hell in Jesus' name. Lord, we enforce your will over the educational curriculum in the Philippines as you purify and sanctify the educational atmosphere in this nation. Let everyone seriously set himself to prayer in secret to seek you more and more each day. Hallelujah! You are the God of breakthrough in the nation. And we declare breakthrough is on the way for the Philippines. Educational system. We will be a showcase of their glory, God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. At this moment, let us pray for the science and technology pillar. Let us pray together. Genesis chapter 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Heavenly Father, we pray that this chapter will always remind us that you are the source and original creator of all things. We are always in awe of your marvelous power and wisdom. And may your people in the area of science and technology will always realize that you are indeed the first. Abba, you have given us human beings with the ability to search out your laws and have given us the freedom to apply their knowledge as they choose. We ask your blessing on all engaged in scientific research and technology and on those who provide the resources for such work, that choice may be made of projects which both enhance human life and have regard to the safety and well-being of the natural order. Lord, we ask that you direct our research to reveal information that may be used to glorify you as our Creator. We specifically pray that this information will influence those trained in the sciences and scientific method to come to realize and accept your written word and the saving grace you offer to all. Lord, 
We pray and thank you for the health professionals in our nation. We thank you for the doctors, nurses, researchers, scientists, hospital administrators, therapists, pharmacists, medical assistants, paramedics, and medical technicians. May you continue to raise up godly health professionals. All wise Father, by faith we decree that just as the Hebrew midwife Shifra and Pua feared and obeyed you, the health professionals in our nations will not succumb to the pressure to compromise, but they will remain committed to their oath to do no harm. As they believe in the promises of your word, and as they ask you, you will tell them remarkably sec remarkable secrets about things to come in their profession. They will be pioneers in discovering cures and medical breakthroughs for our generation. By faith, we decree that they will seek your wisdom and knowledge and always pursue excellence in their chosen fields. They will be dedicated to the proper care and treatments of their patients and they will remember to show their patients mercy just as you have shown mercy unto them. For those health professionals who do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we confess that they will receive the good news of the kingdom and confess with their mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in their hearts that you raised Him from the dead so that they will be saved. Holy Spirit, remind our health professionals not to trust in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Keep them guarded against the torment of blame and guilt. Heal the emotional wounds that come along with their jobs. Give them the boldness they need to stand up for their patients' rights and to contribute significantly to the pursuit of healthcare reform in our country. Remind our godly health professionals that they represent the kingdom of God in the healthcare industry. So their demeanor and behavior reflects kingdom principles. Lord, we pray for our department health secretary that the fear of the Lord rests on him. Lord, we pray for our department of science and technology secretary that the wisdom and knowledge he receives will always come from you. Father in heaven, I pray that you will provide good and godly wisdom to our secretaries. I ask that you provide a team of godly people around them so they will support them and encourage them to lead their areas of leadership according to your way, Father God. Let your will be done in the departments of health and science and technology as it is in heaven. Lord, we continue to lift into you every people who are working in the scientific field to know you, Lord Jesus Christ, and that they will receive the wisdom and courage to pray themselves and speak out God's truth in agriculture, astronomy, aviation and space technology, biochemistry, biology, chemistry, engineering, computer science, invention and technology, environment, geography, geology and geophysics, healthcare science, mathematics, oceanography and meteorology, paleontology, physics, social science, system science, science education and certification, scientific professional bodies, boards and societies, laws and governance relating to science, science research funding and philanthropy, science journals, blogs and periodicals, support services to science. Lord, we also pray that the research ethics professionals will commit everything to you, O God, and ask you, Lord, to provide His grace and power into this area. And lastly, Lord Jesus, we commit unto you our ecological and economical problems, that the scientific professionals may come up with solutions according to your word, ways, and will, that we will be able to provide sustainable solutions for a better community. I lift everything unto you, Lord, the pillar of science and technology, by the power of your most precious blood, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen.
the pillar of media. We all know that media is one of the powerful tools for communication that will either make or break a nation. We need to pray for those who speak and communicate through the media. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, it says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Together, let us pray for the pillar of media. Omnipotent God, we seek for your guidance as we pray for this pillar. We apply your blood to all those working in our local and national media. And we ask you to guide them to bring truth, knowledge, wisdom, and insight into our lives. We pray that you will strengthen them as you use them mightily to bring more people into the light of salvation. We pray for those who are in television, radio, and broadcasting. Let the truth always prevail in media. We rebuke all the lies and all the lies that blind and exploit the people in a world where the enemy is spreading fake news and fake claims. We pray that the truth will always reign as you, O Lord, will expose all the schemes of the enemy in the field of media. We declare that you will raise up people in this pillar who have the integrity and the commitment to speak the truth without any fear. We allow the Holy Spirit to equip all who work in the media to be seekers after truth so that the Philippines headlines and news feed may draw nearer to your ways of justice, mercy, and humility. We pray for purity in the media and entertainment. Remove all the inappropriate images and behavior in this sector, O oh God. We rebuke all the occult TV shows and films and we declare that they will all be banned from airing as we seek your divine intervention. We also rebuke all impurities, pornography, and all the vile images that are taking place in the media in the name of Jesus. We pray for all those who are running and using the social media platforms. We ask for love to abound and not all the hate speech and hateful comments from all the users. Enlighten all the slanderers who use social media to express hate against other people. Eradicate all the ungodliness and filth in media. We speak judgment for those people who spread lies. Let their lying lips be silenced as you, O Lord, expose those who defile your name. Let your word and your goodness go viral across all the social media platforms. We pray that you will raise up Christians to work in traditional and non-traditional media who care deeply about what is going wrong in the society and profess the goodness of Christ. This pillar will become the new evangelist in this season. We pray that these Christians will keep on making content that brings light to the audience. As we declare this, more and more house churches will be open as you, O oh God, are the Lord of the harvest. Despite of the lockdowns and limitations, your people will remain limitless and unstoppable in sharing the goodness of the kingdom because through different media platforms, we will be united. And Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, winning and discipling the whole nations of the world will be fulfilled. As you said in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 19, from them will come songs of thanksgiving and the sound of rejoicing through media and entertainment. People will give praise to you and bring glory to your name. Let your name be honored in the sphere of media and entertainment from this day on. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
Let us pray together for the sports, arts, and culture pillar. Heavenly Father, we ask for your forgiveness in behalf of the sports, arts, and culture pillar of our society. We ask for forgiveness for every lies written in our history. We repent for the rebellion of your people and for every ungodly values, culture, and traditions adapted from foreign nations. We ask for forgiveness for our neglect for the indigenous people and heritage, for the promotion of idolatrous relics and practices, and for every unholy entertainment shown in arts and sports. We pray that you will take control of the pillars of sports, arts, and culture in our nation to uproot its wicked foundations. And our culture doesn't belong to the devil. It belongs to you, our God. The customs of the people and the nation originally came from you. They were meant to give glory and honor to your name. May you take hold of these gates and rule over them. We declare today for redemption of our Philippine history and culture. God, you are the God of history. And we declare that your purposes and intentions for our nation will manifest and the truth of our identity as a nation be brought to light. We claim our nation's God-given destiny by the blood of Jesus. We declare for patriotism to rise up among Filipinos. Love for you, our God. Love for our country and people. We declare for revival over this nation as nationalism grow in every Filipinos. We declare for preservation of our Filipino language. We claim our social identity in the name of Jesus. We declare for friendships, cultural ties, and economic relationships to grow. We claim access to highest wealth of culture. We declare for redemption of our godly, traditional, moral, and cultural values as Filipinos, like trust in God, love of the family, helping neighbors, being respectful, perseverance, forbearance, showing compassion, sympathy, word of honor, and hospitality. We declare for redemption of the indigenous people. Psalms 89.14 says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. We declare for righteous entertainment, encompassing the arts and sports, aligned with God's standard. We declare that the foundation of righteousness, justice, excellence, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and counsel be planted in this pillar. We declare for God's salvation, glory and rulership come upon the people in it, especially those who are influential and very visible among the people, the athletes, the artists, the icons of this pillar. We release God's blessings, knowledge, and wisdom. We pray for every companies and people involved. We pray for God to demolish all the wickedness and strongholds in them. Let your spirit be planted in them, that they will be your instrument of righteousness and blessing and fulfill God's righteous mandate for them for the moral uplifting and development of our nation and people. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the revival in the pillar of sports, arts, and culture. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Salamat kay Ginoo. In the culmination of our of this celebration, even tomorrow, Lord God, salamat sa imuhang presensya, nga padayo namo mabati. At even as your people, oh God, will continue in their attitude of hum humility and seeking after you, as you said in your word, Lord, 
nga kami nga mga imong mga kanakan nga magapadayon nga magahambol sa among kaugalingon and seek after your face salamat Lord nga you will heal our land even our spirit you will Lord God restore ang tanan ginoo namo nga mga nawala ibin sa imong mga katawhan salamat nga niini nga panahuna ang mga prayers o ang among ginoong mga declarations even for today sa among intercession thank you O oh God nga pinaagi sa imong hamili nga dugo at doon nagay katumanan ni atong tanan and as your people palayok ang tanan maga tindog o magkapataas sa ilang mga kamot as I declare this uh, priestly blessing O ye bareke ka Adonai viyash mareka Ya ye Adonai panabaleka bikunika Yes Adonai panabaleka biyasamelika shalom The Lord bless you and keep you The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you The Lord turn his face towards you And give you shalom, nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Great wealth and favor from the Lord be unto all of us. Now all the people of God say, Amen and Amen. Napakoy announcement, no? Salamat sa tanan nga uh, nag-join. Gikan kagaina pagsugod na ano lang tagamay, na alang tagamay mga interruption sa atong pagsugod kagaina. Uh, Thank you to all of you nga nag-join sa ato adya sa ato ang mga uh, kasimbahanan all over Visayas and even Mindanao and even diri sa ato ang mga city him churches sa ato mga simbalay. Thank you for joining this uh, uh, day of atonement celebration nato and be excited kay napatay last the great and the final feasts of this year. This coming Saturday na na. This coming Saturday is our Feast of Tabernacle. Support! <laughs> Salamat kay sa Gino and be excited for that. Oga, as we continue with our 24-hour nung uh, pag-celebrate sa atong Day of Atonement, let's continue to be more nung uh, in attitude of reflection, meditation on what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us nga kita karon pwede ni kayo boldly and confidently can come into the throne room and mercy na the mercy throne of our Lord Jesus Christ I mean, our Abba Father in heaven God bless us all shalom everyone and shalom shalom